Life with David had always felt like a delicate balance. I strove to be the wife he wanted, often sidelining my own desires. Our home, a picturesque suburban haven, was often filled with his laughter and my attempts to match it. But beneath this veneer of contentment lay an undercurrent of dissatisfaction. Not with our life, but with me. Anna, have you ever considered fixing your nose? It's a bit... prominent. His words, casually thrown over dinner one evening, stung more than I cared to admit. My nose, the subject of my teenage insecurities, had never bothered David before. Or so I thought. It's... my nose, David. It's a part of me. He chuckled, a sound that once felt like music but now seemed dismissive. I know, but think about it. A small change, a huge difference. For us. His words echoed in my mind, turning from a mere suggestion into a pressing insistence over the following weeks. Each mention chipped away at my resolve, at my acceptance of myself. Finally, I stood in front of the mirror, tracing the familiar lines of my face. Maybe David is right. Maybe this will make things better. The day of the surgery was a blur of bright lights and hushed voices. I clung to the idea that I was doing this for David, for us. But when I woke up, the world seemed altered, not just my reflection. My face, once familiar, now felt foreign. The nose I saw in the mirror was sleek, refined, and utterly not mine. Panic set in, a tightness in my chest that wouldn't relent. What have I done? David's reaction was the lifeline I hoped for, but it never came. Instead, his once warm eyes grew cold, distant. What happened, Anna? This isn't what we agreed on. His words were like daggers. I... I did this for you, David. He scoffed, a sound that made my heart sink. For me? No, Anna, this is on you. You chose the surgeon. You made the call. The days that followed were a carousel of regret and resentment. I avoided mirrors, avoided the reality of what I had become. David's affections, once my haven, turned into relentless critiques. Look at what you've done to yourself, Anna. How could you think this was a good idea? I sat there, the weight of his words crushing me. I thought... I thought you wanted this. He laughed, a bitter sound that filled the room. I wanted improvement, not this... disaster. His presence, once my source of joy, became a reminder of my perceived failure. The house felt colder, the silences longer. Then came the day I'd never imagined. David, his bags packed, stood at the door, his gaze void of the love that once defined us. I can't do this, Anna. I can't be with you like this. But, David, I did this for you. For us. His reply was a cold, hard finality. You did this for yourself. It's your mistake to live with, not mine. And with that, he left, the door closing with a resounding thud that echoed through the now empty halls of our once happy home. I was left alone, with a face I didn't recognize, and a heart shattered into unrecognizable pieces. It was during one of my aimless walks, a feeble attempt to escape the suffocating confines of my home, that I ran into Sophia. Sophia, an old friend from college, always had an air of confidence that I had admired. Anna? Is that you? I hesitated, the instinct to hide almost overwhelming. Yes, it's me, Sophia. Her eyes widened slightly, a mixture of concern and surprise. I barely recognized you. What happened? The question, so blunt and direct, caught me off guard. Tears welled up, and in a flood, the story spilled out. David, the surgery, the abandonment. David said my nose was too big. I did this for him, and now he's gone. Sophia listened her expression turning from surprise to something fiercer. He did what? Anna, that's not just wrong, it's... It's abusive. Her words stopped me cold. Abusive? No, not David. He just had preferences, right? Sophia, he didn't hit me or anything. He just suggested a change. She took my hands, her grip firm. Abuse isn't always physical, Anna. He manipulated you, preyed on your insecurities. That's emotional abuse. The label hung in the air, heavy and suffocating. Could she be right? Was what David did really abuse? Seeing my confusion, Sophia continued, You need to see this for what it is, Anna. He controlled you, made you feel less. And when you did exactly what he wanted, he left. That's not love. That's control. 
Her words were like a light in the darkness, harsh but illuminating. The more I thought about it, the more I saw the pattern. David's constant criticisms, his subtle digs, his way of making me feel like I was always just short of perfect. But I thought he loved me, I whispered, the reality of the situation starting to seep in. Anna, that's not love. You deserve someone who loves you for you, not someone who wants to mold you into their idea of perfect. Her words struck a chord deep within me. For so long, I had equated David's approval with love, his desires with my needs. But standing there with Sophia, I began to see the twisted nature of our relationship. You're right, Sophia. I... I need to reclaim my life. Sophia smiled, her eyes softening. That's the spirit, Anna. It won't be easy, but you're not alone. I'm here for you. As we parted ways, a seed of determination took root in my heart. Sophia's words had awakened a part of me long buried, a part that yearned for true self-acceptance and freedom from David's shadow. That night, as I lay in bed, I realized the journey ahead would be long and fraught with challenges. But for the first time in a long while, I felt a flicker of hope, a sense of purpose. I was not just the woman David left. I was Anna, and it was time to find out who that really was. Empowered by my conversation with Sophia, I began to see my situation in a new light. I was no longer the victim of David's manipulations. I was a woman reclaiming her power. It was time for David to understand the consequences of his actions. Over the next few days, I meticulously planned my course of action. My story, the truth about David's coercive behavior, needed to be heard, not just for my sake, but for the sake of any other woman who might fall into his manipulative grasp. I started by reaching out to some of David's colleagues and friends under the pretense of needing closure. I invited them for coffee, one by one, weaving in my story subtly. You know, I never thought David would be the kind to just leave, especially after convincing me to change my appearance for him. Their reactions varied from surprise to discomfort, but the seed was planted. Rumors began to swirl, and David's image as the charming, flawless husband started to crumble. But I didn't stop there. I knew that to truly expose David, I needed to reach a larger audience. I penned a candid, heartfelt blog post detailing my journey, from the coercion to the surgery to the emotional aftermath. I shared it on social media, where it quickly gained traction. The phone call from David came sooner than I expected. His voice was a mix of anger and disbelief. What have you done, Anna? Why are you spreading lies about me? I felt a surge of confidence, a stark contrast to the old me who would have cowered at his tone. They're not lies, David. It's the truth. The truth about how you treated me. How you made me feel. You've ruined me, Anna. My colleagues, my friends. They all look at me differently now. That was never my intention, David. I just wanted to share my story, to show what I went through. His voice cracked, a sign of his facade crumbling. You could have talked to me, we could have sorted this out. I let out a bitter laugh. Talk to you? Like how you talked me into changing my face? No, David. You never listened. You never cared. There was silence on the other end, a heavy pregnant pause. Then David spoke again, his voice barely a whisper. I'm sorry, Anna. I never meant for any of this to happen. His apology, laden with regret, didn't bring me the satisfaction I had expected. Instead, it was a confirmation of my growth. I no longer needed his validation. It's too late for sorry, David. Goodbye. As I hung up the phone, I felt a sense of closure. The blog post did more than just tarnish David's reputation. It sparked conversations about emotional abuse and manipulation. Messages of support and solidarity from other women who had faced similar situations flooded in. I had transformed my pain into power, my experience into a beacon of hope for others. As I lay in bed that night, I realized that this was just the beginning of a new chapter. A chapter where I was no longer defined by David's perception of me, but by my own strength and resilience. I had exposed David, but more importantly, I had found myself. The aftermath of my revelations about David brought a whirlwind of change. My story, once a private struggle, had become a public testament to overcoming manipulation and emotional abuse. And amidst this storm of change, David reappeared, a shadow from a chapter I had closed. He showed up one evening, unannounced, his figure looming at my doorstep. The sight of him, once my heart's desire, now felt like an unwanted echo from the past. Anna, can we talk? His voice was laced with a desperation I hadn't heard before. 
but I was no longer the woman who trembled at his words. Why are you here, David? He sighed, a deep, weary sound. I'm sorry, Anna, truly sorry. I've been thinking, and I... I want to make things right between us. His apology, though seemingly heartfelt, came too late. The scars he left were too deep, the wounds too raw. Make things right? After everything, you think we can just go back? He stepped closer, his eyes searching mine. I was wrong, Anna. I see that now. Please, let's start over. I took a step back, my newfound strength bolstering my resolve. Start over? No, David. You walked away, remember? You left when I needed you the most. But I've changed, Anna. I can be better for you. I shook my head, a clear, unwavering motion. It's not about you anymore, David. It's about me. I've moved on. I've grown. The realization dawned in his eyes, a mixture of regret and resignation. So, this is it then? Yes, David. This is it. Goodbye. As he walked away, a weight lifted off my shoulders, a final release from the shackles of our past. In the months that followed, I found myself flourishing both personally and professionally. I took up hobbies that I had long neglected, found joy in the small things, and excelled at work. My blog became a platform for others to share their stories, creating a community of support and empowerment. I often received messages from women who had found solace and strength in my words. One evening, I read an email that brought tears to my eyes. Your story gave me the courage to leave a toxic relationship. Thank you for being so brave. It was moments like these that made every struggle, every pain I had endured, worth it. I had turned my darkest hour into a beacon of light for others. And then there were moments of quiet reflection. One evening, as I stood before my mirror, I looked into my own eyes, eyes that had seen so much, endured so much, yet emerged stronger. I smiled at my reflection, not for the face that looked back, but for the person I had become, resilient, empowered, and free. The reflection was no longer a symbol of David's desires, but a testament to my journey of self-discovery and triumph. The story of Anna and David had ended, but my story, the story of a woman who found her strength in the face of adversity, was just beginning. And as I turned away from the mirror, I knew that whatever the future held, I was ready. For I was no longer just Anna. I was a survivor, a beacon, a warrior. As Anna's story concludes, here's a question to ponder. Do you think Anna's approach to dealing with David's manipulation was justified? Or could there have been a different path to her healing and empowerment? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's discuss the different ways people can overcome emotional abuse. And if you've been moved by Anna's journey, please leave a like, and consider subscribing to our channel for more inspiring stories. Your engagement helps us grow and continue bringing these stories to life. Thanks for watching and we look forward to hearing your insights.